In this Java lab phone book, we will implement a phone directory that reads the names of friends and their phone numbers from a file called names.txt. So this is the names.txt file. We have some people's names and we have their phone numbers as well. Now this is given and we need to store them in a hash map. And a hash map is a key value data structure where the key is given and if we have the key it will return the value and the value are strings so our program will need to have the following capabilities we're going to display all the names in our phone directory we can add someone we can remove someone and we can change their phone number we can also search a number given a specific name we are given a driver program called directory main.java and that is going to be this so this code is also given to us as well. And this is just a series of print statements, um, also a new instance of an object, and also method calls from our class. And this class is what we're gonna have to make with all of these functions inside of it. So we just are given some more uh, description of what we need to do, and we'll do all this here. And this is basically the rest of the instruction. So we need to write a class directory.java that initiates a hat map called directory and implements the following methods. So the way we're coding this is really gonna correspond to this. We see we have these uh, method calls, dot display directory, we have dot add, dot change, dot delete, all this good stuff. And so we're gonna have to make methods according to that. And then when we run, our output should look like this. And now we can start coding our phone directory. We're going to make a new class and our class name per the instructions is going to be directory. Now, by convention, um, classes aren't supposed to start with uppercase, but that's okay. We'll click uh, public static void main, click finish, and then we have our auto-generated main method and class right here. Next, we need to actually go into the file that has the names.txt, and we're going to put it in the folder. We're going to click copy to files, and now we have our names.txt in here. And then we're also going to do the same with the directory main, because the directory main has these series of statements that we're gonna have to adhere to. So we're gonna take this directory main and we're gonna put it in our main package. And we're gonna click copy to files. And we can see um, that we have all of these underlined in red. One is because we need to refactor the package name instead of it being main with a lowercase, it should be main with an uppercase. Just click continue and that will fix that problem. Now we have to make all of these. So this is a constructor. We have these methods and we're going to make all of them. So looking in here in our public class directory, I'm actually going to put the instructions away. So we're going to full screen this and then I'm going to put this on this side. And so we can code according to it. So the first thing that we need is this uh, constructor right here. But we need to do some things before we even do that. So first, we need to actually remove this main method because we're not uh, coding a main inside of here. We're coding for this main method, but we have our own class here. So we don't need a main method. We do need private variables though. We need a private variable to store this name and to store this phone number. So we are going to do string name and we're going to just declare it. We're not going to initialize it here. And the same thing with number. We're going to do string number and we're just declaring both of these. Now that these are both declared, we also want to create our hash map. This hash map is going to be private and these values should also be private because only this class is accessing them. You want to, as much as you can, make things as private as possible. So we're going to have private it's going to be a hash map and then inside of here just like the instructions we are going to pass in our key and our value so we're going to have the types in here we're not actually passing in the names just the types. so we have type name and type number which are both strings and then we're going to call this directory and set it equal to a new hash map and we can just really copy all of this over here and then since it is a kind of class where you have to have these parentheses 
and then we're going to need to hover over and click import hash map. It's not a good idea to just import all classes. That's actually really bad practice because if you do that, you import a ton of stuff that you don't need. So if you hover over this, you only import the things that you need. So you have your private variables. We have our hash map and now we can code our constructor and this constructor is going to be our default constructor. So what this falls into when we make this directory. When we create a directory, like if we were to make like a scanner class, we would have a scanner, the name of our scanner, new scanner, and then parentheses. And sometimes we don't pass anything in, but if we are to pass something in, we are basically accessing the class that has a constructor. And so we have something in here, so we need to access the class with a constructor. To make a constructor, we need to have public. We need the name of our class, so directory. And then we need something in our parameter because we're passing in this as our parameter. So we're passing in names.txt. This is this file. We're passing in this file. So we are going to have string names. And this is going to store the entire file. Now, we can come in here like this. And we need to, uh, in this method header, throw a file not found exception. And the reason why we need to have throws file not found exception is because, well, if we can't find this file, we need to throw this exception because this file is not there. So that's super important. And now we're going to read the file and we are going to store everything inside of a variable that we create. So we can say reading file. We're going to come down here and to read a file, we use a scanner. So we do scanner read, and then we're going to have new scanner. And then we're going to have new file. And then our file is going to be names.txt because this is our file name. Now we want to hover over file, import file, and also import scanner. So we've imported all of these and now we are able to keep going. So from here, we want to write the file names into our map. And it's important to remember that the names are equal to the number. So if I pull up the file and we look at the file, we have our names right here. It's separated by this delimiter. I think that's what it's called. And then we have our numbers. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to use the tokenizer class. And we're going to take this first token. This is the delimiter. And so that will break our token. And this will be our next token. And then same thing with this one and this one. So we're going to use a while loop for this. We're going to say while our scanner, which is read, while read has next line, so we're going to go through all these lines, we are going to set a variable equal to this first line. We are going to get this line, break it up, and then we're going to pass it into our hash map. We're going to do the same thing with this line. We grab this line, we take this first token, we break it with the delimiter, and then we pass this next token in as well for the uh, value, because we have string, we have key and then value. Remember that hash map is key and value. So in our constructor, again, we're going to have a while loop. We're just going to run this as long as read dot has next line. We're going to make our variable. This is going to be, uh, we'll just call this test because we want to test it. We'll do string test and this is equal to read dot next line. So this is going to grab the entire line and then we can use the tokenizer class. So we'll do string tokenizer, and then we'll just call this uh, st. And we're going to set this equal to a new string tokenizer. Make sure you spell that correctly. And then we want to pass in this test. So we're gonna pass in test. And then the next thing that we want to pass in is our delimiter surrounded in double quotes. We're going to have to import the string tokenizer class and so we hover over that and now it's important. Now we could actually skip this and just put this read.next line inside of here instead of test. Now we are going to use a predefined method in our hash map class to put this token inside of here. Because remember, this st, it's going to store this and then it's going to store this as the two tokens. So we're going to pass that into our hash map for the key and value. So to do this, we're going to get our hash map name. It is directory here. So we have directory, 
and then we're going to do dot we can see all of the different classes that come up we're just going to do dot put and dot put in this first one we have string key and string, val string value we can see and this associates the specified value with the specified key in the map and we have more uh, parameters and returns down here so we're just going to click this it'll come up we want to pass in our first token so we're just going to do st dot next token if we look at the file um, if there is if there were to be a space between the name and the delimiter we wouldn't want that space so just for kind of safety what we can do is dot trim and what this does we'll actually see it in a second when I do it for this next token is it trims whatever white space is after our token and this is important for the next part because there could be some trailing white spaces back here like if we have some spaces like this it will get rid of it so we also want to pass in um, not names but we want to pass in st so the name of our token dot next token and then we're going to do dot trim and if we hover the, over this it's a string it will return a string whose value is the string and it'll remove the leading trailing white spaces and there's more of a definition down there so we have the trim and so this is our directory dot put we're putting our key and then we're putting our value and then we're doing this as long as we have a next line and so this is going to be our constructor we're passing in the names which is a file to the red and specifically what we're doing is we are reading a file and putting it into the hash map and then we're going to be able to throw a files not found exception and so this is a super simple way to write the constructor now that the constructor is done we are going to have to look at the other methods that we need to implement so we have no more error here we're going to do display directory last because that just displays the names the next thing that I want to do is this add so if we wanted to super easy way to do this we could hover over here and we can click create add and this will auto generate our add method you want to check the parameters and the actual type here because sometimes that can be a little bit messy but it is void because all we're doing is we're adding we have a string and I'm going to change this to add name because we're adding a name and then I'm going to do add number and this is a method if we want to add someone into our phone book so for this we're going to set our name equal to add name and then that will um, pass this parameter and store it into our private variable name and then we're going to do number is equal to add number so the same thing we want to store this into our private variable and then we want to put this into our hash map so all we're going to use is this directory dot put again so we do directory dot put we're passing in the name and we're passing in our number and then we want to confirm that this has been passed in so what we're going to do is we're going to do a sysout and then we are going to have adding we're going to append to this the name we're going to have a space and then we're going to append to this the number so we are adding this person to the phone book and we've declared that we have added the name and the number inside of here and so this is our add method our parameter is the name to be added and also the number to be added and this method will add someone to our phone book and we can see that gets rid of the error right here then we're going to go to this change so we're going to create a method right here and this creates our change method and this is if we want to change someone and uh, instead of doing this add name and add number what I'm just going to do is name and number now there could be some problem with this but we're going to use the this dot to uh, remedy that so we want to set our name to this private name and we want to set the private number to the number and I think I said that backwards for the name we want to set the private name to this name and also the private number to this number so to get the private name we're going to do this dot and then we're going to have name and this will get the instance or the declaration of this name up here and we can set it equal to name and this won't cause any interference we're going to do this dot and then we're going to have number and then we're going to set it equal to number uh, keep in mind we could have also done this with add I just chose to do it differently here 
but this is a little bit more simpler. That was not correct grammar. So now, since we're changing something, we want to do directory, and this is our hash map name, dot replace, and then for here, it says replaces the entry for the specified key only if the current mapped to some value. Now, we don't just want that, we want this replace. And this will take our key, and it will take the old value, and it will take the new value. And so what it's doing is it's changing the value to this new value, but it's keeping the key. So basically, if we have key 1, and it's set to value 3, well, if we want to update the value, we leave the key, so key 1, but we just change the value. So key 1 is currently pointing to 3, but if we update it and have it point to 4, we would just be passing in 4, and then key 1 would point to 4. So we will do dot replace, and we will have these inside of here. Now, what we want, we want our key. And remember, the key is the name. This next value is our old value. So we're going to have to get the old value. We're going to do directory dot, and then we're just going to do get, and this will get the object key. So it's going to return the value at this key, and the key is name. So we're gonna pass in name, and then the next one, we're just going to pass in the new number, so we're passing in this dot number. And so these are our values. And then from here, we just want to do a sysout, confirming that we did this. So we're going to do changing. We want our key, so we're gonna pass in name. And then we want a space, and then we want to append to this the new number. So we're changing this person to their new number. We're changing this person's old number, sorry, to their new number. So we're basically updating this key to the value. Next thing that we want to do is, well, we have this delete. So we can create our delete method right here. And from this delete method, we're basically going to be removing someone. Oh, also forgot to make some commentation right here. So our parameter is the name, and then parameter is also number. I'm gonna say number to be changed. And what this is doing is changing a name's number. Now we're going to be in the delete method. So inside of here, we are taking a string, and if we look at the code that we're given to the right with the delete method, phone book directory dot delete, we want to remove this person. So we're going to remove the name and so we have to totally obliterate this key from our hash map so we are going to do this dot name we're going to set it equal to the name passed in and then what we're going to do is directory this is the name of our hash map and we're going to do dot remove we can pass in the object key and object value or just the object key we just want the key right now so we're just going to click that and we're passing in name. So inside of our system.out.println, we're just going to print the person's name, and then we're going to say removed, in quotes, because this is a string. So this person has now been removed. Um, the only reason why we're storing it, we're storing the name passed in inside of here, is because once we remove it, it's no longer going to be in our key. So we're just passing it in right here. So this is the delete method. And now, before we do the display directory, we're going to get phone number. So we'll hover over this, and we'll create this method as well. So we are public object get phone number. Now, for some reason, like I said, you gotta watch out with the auto creation. It passes in an object. However, we don't want an object in here. When we look at the get phone number, which is right here, we are passing in a name. I believe the dot equals might be um, messing it up but we want to basically just have a string right here. So it's going to be a public string. And then inside of here, the parameter, we want to get the phone number of a person. So we're gonna pass in this person's name and we're going to get their phone number. So we're going to set name, or we need to do this dot name equal to name. And so our private variable name will store the name we're passing in. And then we need an if statement to see if it's in here. We'll say if, and then we're going to do directory dot contains, and then it says contains key. We want to do contains key because we're passing in a name. 
So directory dot contains key. We want to pass in our object, which is name. This is a string. And then we're going to be below our if statement. And we're going to say, well, if our directory does contain the key, we want to return this. So we're going to return. We are going to have a space. And then we're going to do a append. And we're appending directory dot get. And then we're getting the name. So from this, we're getting the number at this name. That's what directory.get does. It takes this key and then it returns the value at the key. Otherwise, we're going to fall into this else statement and we're just going to return these two double quotes with nothing in it because we have this dot equals. So it wants to dot equal to this. Now all we have to do is display our directory. So we're going to do a public void display directory. Before we do this though, we should add some commentation to our delete. So in here, we're going to pass in the name to be removed. And this method removes a name from our hash map. Now for the get phone number, we're going to see if someone is in our hash map. We are taking the name for whose phone number we want to get. And we're returning if it is in our hash map or not. So for the public void display directory, we're going to use a for loop. And actually, I'm going to introduce the for each loop. And to do for each loop, it's going to be a lot simpler than a regular for loop, but it's going to be the exact same concept. But before we go into that, we're just going to explain what the for loop does. So this for loop is basically going to go through our entire hash map, and we're going to print out everything inside of it because we want to display our directory. So we have four, and then for a for each loop, remember for a normal for loop, we would do something like, we'll just do a basic int a is equal to zero, a is less than we'll say five, and then we'll do a plus plus. And what this does is it declares an a, it'll run this as long as it's less than five, and then we're just incrementing it every single time. Well, a for each loop is a lot simpler. There's only two parts, and it's separated by this colon right here. And inside of our for each loop on the left side, we're going to use part of the hash map class. We're going to do map dot, and then we have all of these things that come up. We want to do this last entry right here. So a map entry key value pair, the map.entry set method returns a collection view of the map. So we're basically returning um, a specific kind of lane in our map. We're, we're returning a key and the value pair. So we're going to click this. And instead of having these in here, what we're going to do is do pair entry. And this is just a name that we're making right here. We could label this whatever we want. We're just making... Uh, kind of a new variable per se. It's a light definition. And then on the right side, we're going to do directory dots, and then we're going to do entry set. And then we're given the uh, definition of this over here. We're going to return the set of the mapping contained in this map. We're given more that we can read over there. And so we'll click this, and now we have our for each loop. Now that we're inside of here, all we want to do is make a sysout. And then we're going to do pair entry dot, and then we have a get key, or we should have, oh, there we go. We have a get key inside of here. And then we also need to add to this, and we will just separate this by a slash T, which is a tab. We're going to add to this a pair entry dot, and then we want to have get value. So we have the key and the value that we're returning. And so this should complete this code. To run it properly now, we have to run this main, but it's on the same side as our console. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this main and I'm going to drag it over here, and now we can run this. So if we run it, we can see it looks like this. Now it doesn't exactly look like what we need it to look like. We can see that the spacing is a little bit off, and there is a way to fix that. Um, we can hard code some if statements that will check the actual length of our string for the for loop in our display directory, and we'll print out the appropriate spaces for it. What I'm proposing we do is instead of just printing this out right here, what we want to do is we want to check the length of our key, because remember the key is the name. All of these uh, numbers are in order, but we want to check the length of the name and to make it look like the actual um, project rubric, we want to input spaces in the front, depending on the name length. So what we can do is say string x is equal to, now we want to get the key. 
So we're going to do pair entry dot, and then we're going to have get key. Since this is an object and we're storing it in a string, we need to cast it to a string. So we're going to add the string cast to it. And this is going to do it every time this for loop runs. Now, I've just coded this out, but we can add these if and if else statements to it. And so what these if and else if statements do, sorry, else if, is basically it adds spacing depending on the length of our string. And remember, our string is x, and remember, x is the key. So we're getting the length of the key. And depending on the length of that, we're going to add specific spacings in here. And so if we run this again, we can see that they're all in order. Now, there is a few things that are kind of wacky, like this remove right here. We don't have a space in here. So we're going to add a space right here. And then now we can run this again. And it looks like this. Now we can check the rubric to see if there's anything else that needs to be changed. We have John Adams number. It oh, looks good. We have the removed right here. Except now our adding seems to need some spacing in here. That way it can look like changing. So what we can do is we can go into the adding and well we could do the same thing inside of here. We can have these if else if statements we just modify it so it would fit into our method to print this out. But since we only are adding one person and this is kind of just an example we don't need to code all that and I'll just add some spaces like this and then it looks good. It looks like a rubric and it looks like we've finished this project. So this is how you would code out the phone directory. We have our private variables, which we will fill in later. Before this, we have all of our imports. Remember, don't use the star or the dot star, even or asterisk, even if it's very convenient because you're importing things that you don't need and you only want to import things that you need. We have a private hash map right here that's going to store our keys and values. We have our public directory, which is our constructor and I'll actually move this over here so we can see this while we talk this out and then we have a scanner inside of here it's gonna read in the file after we pass in the file in our main method and then we're going to use this tokenizer class to get the tokens we're gonna to use this delimiter to split our tokens and add them into the key and value and then we have this add method where we're going to add someone to our phone book and then we have this change where we change a person's number. We have this delete where we delete someone from our hash map. And then we have a get phone number where we take a person's name and we get their phone number. And then lastly, we have display directory. And what displays directory does is it displays everyone in our phone book. And that is it for this program. Let's run it again and see that she looks good.